Hello, friends and fellow adventurers. Welcome to the MinMax Podcast. We want to thank you for joining us, and you do so as we continue Blood Lords. As always, we'd like to invite you to come join our Discord, where you can hang out with us and other listeners of the show. And if you'd like to throw a little financial support our way, you can check out our Patreon, and a shout-out to all of those that are Lich Level and above. Rock Jedi, Wolf, Blondimus Slump, Thunder Mammoth, The Trevor Project, Das Chris, Fizzgig, AC Goldner, Arab Car, Hope Just Gonna Secret Pasture There, Indie Link, Tawdry Monster, Mercutio, Angel Shadow Art, Cyrendon, The Necromancer Forever, Doc Holiday, Corey, Jason K, Dickie Lopez, Bobson Doug Knight, Ricky Rope Bridge, Alex K, Doma Elaka, Frank L, Just Mike Works, Rusty, Argoon's Long Lost Elbow, Fig Deer, Zach S, Jimmy H, Mr. Turtle Sleeve, Darren, Caleb W, Pickle, Mr. Grim, Fire Down, M54, Ewaz, James and S, Eric R, Plus Two Vorpal Salmon of Whacking, I'm Not a Robot, George F, Leo Hard, 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 Hard Witch Hunter, Jeremy D, Matthew M, Scott E, Progeny of Kuchu Lane, Liz Giggles, Calistra Specialty, Brendan K, Gringus Maximus, and Andrew G. Shout out to new patron this week at the quick level, Mark X. Thank you all so much for your support. And now we'll recap of session 24. We're still in the rain-soaked Axenwood, but we found what we're looking for, Iron Tavia's cabin. Upon the suggestion of kicks, we've decided to just try and burn it down. Fuck it. All hell absolutely breaks loose, and in the chaos, Gerdrug gets eaten by an animate fireplace. Gerdrug is dead. Again. The rest of us managed to take the fireplace down and kill the few fetchlings and a little wizard guy that were trying to protect the cottage. We decide to give up on the whole fire plan for now and start looking around, deciding that even though we're down a man, we have to continue our mission. Are is with the 20 to search? Let's go ahead and get, yeah, a search from uh, Lucan and Sundrinker as well. Well, 15 is my best. As you're all searching around, there's a handful of things that happen. You kind of take a look at some of the, uh, what were they called again? Mm-hmm. Fetchlings. Fetchling, thank you. I don't know why that completely escaped me. A voice from beyond. Yeah. Fetchlings. <laughs> Fetchlings, uh, the, one of the Fetchlings had a notebook in their pocket. I threw it towards Lucan. Sure, I'll take a look at the notebook. What's in this notebook? What you see here is a ledger with set dates indicating shipments on a wagon provided by the Carter's Consortium to ship Brain Grit out of the cottage. Notes in the margins name Sani Bride of the Sea with the words Tremor Paste and Sallow Shore beneath them. A second note that names Decrozia and the town of Pagked with the words Insufficient Quantity next to them. So what do we think? Is this Decrozia another ingredient along with the Brain Grit and the Tremor Paste? I zoned out. I'm really high. What? (laughs) What did you say, David? (laughs) Do we think this decrosia is a third ingredient along with tremor paste and brain grit? And probably. Do we have to go to peg cud? Sounds like it. We're going to track this all down. Insufficient quantity. So maybe what they really want to do requires all three of these ingredients and they didn't have enough decrosia? Go ahead and give me a crafting check to anyone who has it. Hopefully that wasn't just a drug. Hell no, I got that shit. You got that shit? Alright. I do not. Let's see it, Kicks. Bye, So, uh, you know, or at least it's nothing you've ever heard of, Decrosia does not sound like an ingredient. It's no herb that you've ever heard of or material or anything like that. Maybe it's a person? Yeah, dealer or something? Okay. Now I hold on to the notebook and uh, continue looking around. There's some doors we haven't been in, it looks like. There are a few doors in here. I was going to say we lost our trap person. Should I just start kicking down doors? Oh, shit. Here, I, yeah. I, I'll save you the time. The doors are actually all open. Because I kicked okay. them in. <laughs> well, they, I mean, they weren't, but now they are. Now, you can see into each of those rooms. They seem to be 
bedrooms. There's three of the rooms, and there are two narrow beds with wooden bed stands, candle holders, a pair of armoires filled with dark clothing and other personal belongings. What about this door that goes to a staircase? Does that go up or down? Is this a downstairs? That goes down. Okay. Now, in the... So, like the, on the uh, far side, there's a low ar- archway that leads into a kitchen. In the kitchen, you've got a black iron stove. There's a couple of wash basins in here, some storage shelves, cupboards filled with eating utensils, cooking tools, blah, blah, blah. There is a small wooden doll dressed as a witch that rides a broom hanging from the ceiling. Okay, that's a bit creepy. Yep, just hanging there. There are also two potions, or potion bottles, that sit on the counter and are neatly labeled Barkskin Potion and Oil of Mending. I take them? I take them. What does Barkskin do if you take it? Barkskin? I I almost took Barkskin as a spell. It's just not very good, though. But I did think that would be funny. And Lucan... Yes. The witch hanging in the kitchen is magic. The little doll thingy? The little doll. Little wooden doll, dressed up like a witch, riding a broom, <sighs> hanging from the ceiling. I, oh, uh, if I know anything about witches, I probably shouldn't fuck with that. But, fuck it, I do. Goddamn. Uh, I take it. Take it down? Yeah. Do you attempt to identify it? Do we want to take some time here on this floor before we try and do anything else? Sure. Okay. There's nothing here. I don't mind. Well, we're going to want to heal up. That's for sure. Yeah. I don't mind hanging out here for a little bit. Okay. All right. Do you guys, do you guys mind if I take that barkskin potion? Oh, yeah. If you want to take it. It might come in handy sometime. Okay. Then, uh, yeah. I will attempt to make a... I'll start with a identify on this doll, and then we're going to do some... Um, medicine? Medicine, yeah. Does a nature or religion check work? Uh, nature nature or religion, whichever you prefer. But you can try having Kix do the doll while you do the healing. Oh, yeah, let's do that. That's a better idea. Thanks, Swanee from Beyond the Grave. <laughs> How hurt are you? I'm down uh, 19... Kicks, are you hurt? I'm looking fresh as fuck. It's basically just, just Luke and me. It's yeah. just Luke and that's hurt. I, it's because nice. the guy that took all the damage died. <laughs> <laughs> well, that saves us a lot of time, though. I mean, we don't have to do a lot of treat wounds. Yes. Yeah. Right. If everybody just seven. dies when they get hurt, it'll be fine. No, no more healing. So, except the injured people die, we'll kill them off at the end if they're too low. Take <laughs> some time. I'm going to spend another 10 minutes, so I'm going to do at least 20. Hey, uh, Kix, why don't you go ahead and roll me an occultism check for identifying this uh, witch doll that's hanging from the kitchen ceiling. 24. Nice. 24 is exactly a success. Woo! This is an item called a Lucky Kitchen Witch. This small doll in the shape of a witch is made from sticks and clad in a simple dress, bonnet, and wooden shoes. It sits astride a miniature straw broom. When hung in a kitchen, the witch brings good luck and protects a cook from malicious spirits. The lucky kitchen witch must hang in a kitchen for a week to give any benefit. When you have a lucky kitchen witch hung in your kitchen, you can re-roll a cooking lore or crafting check made during downtime to make food, earn income, or craft an alchemical item in your kitchen. I love it. That's fun. Worthless, but fun. Worthless, but fun. Just like me. Hey, but wait until we have that thing back in our kitchen with our goon. Oh, yeah. But it's also worth 250 gold. Wait until we sell that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Liquidate it for something more useful in a combat situation. <laughs> the only way. <laughs> All right. It takes me 20 minutes to heal up to full. Anybody else can get any amount of 21 that you healing that you need. 
I'm full. Sounds like that's about it, yeah. You said the stairs go down? The stairs lead to down. Do we go down? No, right? Yeah, let's go down. Fuck it. We're here. We might as well try and fight this motherfucking hag. That's what we came here for. Who goes first? Gerdrug's not here to scout the way. Arius. I look at the door. I'm not growing, growing balls today. <laughs> the door is open. And it leads down into the darkness. Low light? What is this bullshit? Okay, I can't. I have light on myself, I assume, then. Okay, I go to, I, I, I lead, I go downstairs. I'll follow, Sundrick will follow, then Lucid. Because I have my lantern out. The purple lever to burning torch? Yes. Nice. As you make your way down the stairs, you find yourself in a small stone room that is about 20 feet by 20 feet. The stairs continue on down, but there is a wooden door at the bottom of the landing going deeper in. Off to the right, you see a couple of barrels that are upended and some broken banding scattered about. But at the back of the room, you see a skeleton that is shackled to the wall. It's the skeleton of what you think would be a minotaur. Well, that's coming to life and trying to kill us. Sitting there slumped over in the corner. Yeah, let's just leave. Mind attack. <laughs> I search the room for anything else of interest of or of value. I keep my distance from the Militar skeleton because it, it frightens me. I poke it with my sword. <laughs> of course you do. Lucan, as you're kind of searching around, you notice that there are... I notice Arius being a dumbass. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. You notice that there are actually in some of these barrels piles of bones, actually. The barrels are just filled with bones of all shapes and sizes, creatures of all different varying types. Arius, when you poke the skeleton, it twitches. Of course it does. I prepare to fight it. A roll for initiative, I assume. Or maybe not. It's still chained? Maybe. It is chained. It's like shackled up, like arms over its head and shackled spread out. And I don't mean like... In a sexy way. I mean, yeah, absolutely in a sexy way. Oh, oh, never mind. But wait, hold on. You mean like with wrist crossed sexy or like bars on a wall sexy? I mean, who am I kidding? They're both sexy. What's wrong with all you? No, it's just cu it's cuffs on the wall. <laughs> Is it like, so it's not moving, right? It twitched. Arius, poke it again. All right. I poke it harder. Trak Marak, you feel a slight stabbing sensation. You're just in a fog. Where where are you? There's somebody here with you, and, and you feel like you're waking up from something. And you look up, and you see a skeleton with a greatsword poking you. that who who is there where 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 am i uh, oh it's speaking i was talking i'm bored arius walks away yes hello my name is lucan holler and you are in a cabin in the woods uh in the basement and you are a skeleton in case you weren't aware i i look down at myself this is not how I looked before dear dear okay well you are an undead uh, were you at least in Geb before yes yes Geb yes I lived in Geb good good so you know all about undead you are one now uh, welcome to the afterlife it will be your best life take it from me David, take a hero point. <laughs> you said this was a cabin in the in the woods. Yes, a witch's cabin. Did you anger a witch, perchance? Yes, but but 
Which, which woods? The Axon Wood. Hmm. I wonder if this is the last house I worked on. Or are you a what were you carpenter? doing? <laughs> the minute Did you install carpenter? a living fireplace? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to talk if you installed the fireplace. <laughs> no, I, I was just part of the builders' league. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh yes. Wait, you pissed them off, didn't you? <laughs> Never mind. No, no actually, you uh, very specifically gained like eight fucking reputation points. With oh, that's they right. We us, were good. Uh, you pissed business. off the we tax collectors' off the, union. The tax. Oh, I'm I'm perfectly fine. You pissed off the, off the IRS. What have you done? <laughs> They're coming for you now. My fucking job. <laughs> what? What year is this? It is 4722. That... that doesn't seem possible. Oh, when... when do you last remember? I don't know, Tyler, we never really settled on, uh, like, how long this has been. <laughs> uh, it can be as, uh, far back as, no shit, negative 928. But if I built this house, it can't be that long ago. Probably not. Probably not. It has been at least a couple decades. Well, I guess you don't have to just hang around anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, except I, I, I am right now. I'll have Sundricker start to uh, take down the Minotaur skeleton. Unless some kind of check is needed. There's a lock on it. Uh, I break it? Sundricker breaks it. Sundricker breaks it. Yeah, that's got to be possible. And now that I'm a skeleton, can I just, like, break my hands off and put them back on? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you have the collapse? Just I collapse, actually yeah. do have collapse, yes. Then you absolutely can. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, he'll just all of a sudden collapse into a pile of bones and then, like, reassemble myself. Excellent trick. Well, that's a new one. <laughs> Yeah, when he stands up, he is very, very big. I've got him listed as 7'2". Probably act actually can't stand at full height in this in this cramped basement. Well, I'm surrounded by giant skeletons. Okay. Um. So anyway, as I mentioned, my name is Lucan. What's your name? I am Trakmaruk. Trakmaruk. Well, this is Arius. He's indifferent. And Kix. He's a quick. Don't kill him, please. What's a quick? Is what this <laughs> Last thing I remember was being a quick myself, so... Oh yeah, that's right, this case. Still, undeath makes one hunger, as I should know. And I pull out a vial of blood and take it like a shot. <laughs> but what are you doing here in this house? Well, we were tracking down its owner, who is a witch. They're up to nefarious things, which, I mean, to be fair, we all are. But their nefarious things are getting in the way of our nefarious things. So we're going to kill the witch and track down her suppliers and kill them too. Would you like to join us? We just lost a man. What a sales pitch. <laughs> well, as a uh, thank you for... Awakening me? Well, that was all Arius. He just poked you with his sword. I can assist you in your task for now. That would be most excellent. Yes, I do believe you owe us that because we awakened you. I say, <laughs> not having any idea how any of this happens. That's a right place, right time kind of situation there, Luke, and take advantage. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to call you Mook. Is that okay? Mook. <laughs> Mook. Not okay. That doesn't sound okay. Track marks? He just stares at you. Track. Marook? Uh, is the skull, is, is the Minotaur wearing anything? No. Completely naked. Do you need any um clothes or weapons on anything? I think we might have some extras. No. I'm fine. Okay. Right. Moving on then. Yeah, the only thing the only thing he does have is like it looks like something like wrapped around his like where his biceps used to be. <laughs> he uh 
he spends a little bit of time like tightening that up. All right. Well, you know, at least as a skeleton, you ain't got anything dangling around. So, yeah. Other, otherwise, he is completely naked. Nothing on. Just, just a minotaur just skeleton. A minotaur skeleton. Do your eyes like glow red? I think that I think they do in general. But yeah, his his definitely do. Excellent. Don't you even have like starting wealth? You have nothing. We have to arm you. <laughs> I think he already is armed. He's put everything into some hand wraps. Literally, literally the only item I gave him was hand wraps, yeah. <laughs> it's all he's got. Are they at least good hand wraps? <laughs> and they're plus one striking, yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, I thought we were going to find the hag in this cottage for sure, and we haven't. How very disappointing. The stairs lead further down. Oh, okay. Let's go down further. Does my new friend Mook need any healing? Or is he good to go? Nah, he's been sitting there for a couple decades. He's fine. All right, then. <laughs> well, straight off the wall and into combat. Like After he stands up, he kind of stretches out. He's very stiff. He, like, he moves his hands around because it's so weird just being bone. Yes, I, I'm sure it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but I don't know. Do I know that Arius killed their summoner like immediately upon being created? I don't know if Lucan no. knows that. No. I don't know that. Damn. Alright. Arius, how long did it take you to get used to your new body of bone? Made of bone? No. <laughs> Um, I just got used to it It didn't really matter to me How long before you got in your first combat? Uh, A couple seconds A a couple seconds? Well I suppose (laughs) a, a, a necromancer would summon you To be in combat, that makes sense and you survived, so... Killed the necromancer. I mean, I, I killed the necromancer. <laughs> you killed the necromancer? Who summoned you? Yeah, some kid. So, not a very good necromancer, then. God damn it, I'm a kid killer, too. Fuck. I'm a kid killer. <laughs> you're, you're a kid killer, too, bitch. You guys are evil. <laughs> I'd say half of the party is kid are kid killers, but... <laughs> What have I done? Who knows what other me has done? I've probably <laughs> killed a kid. I mean, I... Kicks yeah, has been demon, <laughs> demon kicks. But demon kicks. I'm sure he's killed someone. Maybe not that in my body, shady. but... <laughs> uh, kicks as uh, Arius is telling the story, you find yourself realizing that you knew that already. That I was a kid killer? The kid. As you're talking about the kid that Ari has killed, you oh. get flashes uh, sitting at, a, at a, a rickety bar table with this kid across from you getting drunk and you handing him a letter. I handed a, kid, a child a letter? You did. It was the demon you. I'm the reason Arius exists? What? That would be the point of the flashback, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you owe me, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> but neither of you know it. <laughs> neither of us know it. I just assume it was a terrible flashback of something else. Because I saw these guys murder people in a bar. It was the same bar, actually, that you watched them murder the ghoul and the men. <laughs> Bad things that happen at that bar. To... Don't go there. I don't think anybody will anymore. It's good. Well... Down the stairs, I suppose. Um, Truck Maruk, are you any good at uh, searching for traps or being. I was going to say meat shield, but that's not really quite applicable, is it? Um, just a shield? Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean, but I can disable some traps. I had to make and remove my share as a builder's league that makes sense well fantastic would you care to go first down these dark and scary stairs you just meet the guy hey you want to go first 
Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The introduction here is, hey, uh, do you want to join us? We just lost a guy. Uh, also, you want to go first down the stairs? We need a shield. Uh, yes, absolutely. That is how Luke would handle this. <laughs> just curious, what is everybody's hit points? 4D. 60. An amount. We have 60, David? Holy crap. 54. D10. I only have 14 con. I could have built it with 16. I don't have a lot of con, but that's because I had to build up my strength index. Yeah. Yeah, monks are kind of mad. And if you want to do like the, whatever they are, the focus spells. Yeah, I don't have a lot of wisdom, so I actually don't have a very good perception. So I'm not very good at finding traps. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can disable them, but I'm not very good at finding them. All right. Well, down the stairs we go, I guess. It's a simple wooden door to continue to go down. You open the door and you begin walking down the stairs and they go down deep into the darkness. What light sources do you all have right now? My lantern. My sword. Or ever-burning purple torch. My brain. (laughs) Uh, The torch, Luke, and as you begin to descend, gutters out. Are we entering an anti-magic field? The light on Arius's Arius's sword. What level spell is that? Well, it's a cantrip, so two to level two. We're only level four, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Arius, the light in your sword is stays strong. Kicks your light also holds strong. Darn tootin'. I guess I need a better ever burning flame. Who it, tra- uh, track Maruk is going first, followed by either Arius or Sundraker. Yeah, I was first. Arius is first, not track Maruk. I track Maruk's first. I'm sorry, I'm right behind him. Right behind. Okay, got it. Yeah, we sent. We always send the new guy down first. We gotta test him out. Yeah, that's our thing. Or at least it's gonna be now. Gotta test him out. <laughs> <laughs> new guy goes first. Uh, between Kix and Lucan, who's at the end. Mm, kicks, I'm sure. Oh, I'm tethering in the back. Lucan would be right behind Sundrigger. As you're descending down the stairs, Lucan's light gutters out, and you hear the like the weight of the room has gotten heavier. As you go deeper, the darkness is, is oppressing and cuts off pretty tightly at the end. You find at the bottom of the stairs, finally, after what seems like forever, walking down these rickety wooden steps you see a simple wooden door these steps were much less rickety when I was here last I was going to say it's certainly not up to the standards of the builders they get anymore tis an old house I get a 17 to check the store for traps as track Maruk is is checking for traps say that five times fast Track Maruk is... Tra- oh my god, that's is going to be difficult. <laughs> I'll get used to it, right? I think. Uh, as that's occurring, I need everybody to roll perception for initiative. Oh. Okay. Perception or initiative? Well, I mean, perception for initiative. What if I say I was stealthing real quick? No. I choose not to perceive. I'm too, I'm too busy looking at Lucan's feet. Not that way, just like <laughs> I'm not like turned on by his feet. Uh, or sure. am I? <laughs> you could be if you want. Like, I'm not. I'm not here to judge. How like. are Lucan's feet? <laughs> Do you take care? You know, of I it? hadn't thought of it, but I'm sure fine. I'm, I'm sure he gets pedicures. Now you're thinking about it. As Track Maruk goes down to start checking along the edges and making sure that there's no catches or th- anything like that a shadow emerges from the wall behind kicks rears back and slashes at him with his shadow hand who does this the shadow that's come out of the wall behind you ah. behind me behind you I got a 30 on its check <laughs> a vanish it's a tiefling trait. Oh, yeah? It's not. Yeah, it's a little, like, dark stalkery thingy. 
It's almost cute in a way. <laughs> it is, I think. You would. Uh, that attack on kicks is a <sighs> nat 20. <sighs> kicks take 22 points of negative damage. Negative, but I'm not the one that could not take that. So this is book two, right? So I can use my book two power? You have book two power? Oh, do we? <laughs> <laughs> do we I think that was return. <laughs> that was return, yeah. yeah. Uh, here, I, I will say, is that does that take you down? No. 20, 22? No, it, I didn't. I didn't think so. I know you're a caster, <laughs> but you know. I mean, we're check, not. We're not that level. <laughs> it hurts really bad, and it's probably the first time I've ever been hurt this bad, and I don't know what to do. So you got the negative healing trait. Oh, that's right. From that ritual. Now I have to look it up to be specific. Sorry. Pretty sure you ignore negative damage, and anything that says it heals with negative, you take healing from. It does not take negative damage, and is healed by negative damage. Oh, but what ritual was this? What am I forgetting? It's one that he he uh, declined, but the other guy accepted. Oh, that's right. And then he went and told Arius, and Arius was like, "Go fuck yourself." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> that sounds accurate. <laughs> oh man! Uh, and as as the shadow goes through you, he's, you can see it's almost trying to grasp at you in some way, and you can see that he's actually reaching for your shadow that's dancing off of the walls. But as he claws at you, and the attack does nothing. He looks shocked for a moment, and he squints at you. Spends an action seeking. And then his eyes go wide, and then he dips into the wall. Can't wait till Tyler decides when to take advantage of all of us having negative healing. <laughs> There's no way you gave that to me out of your the niceness of your heart. Oh yeah, that's what I did it for. <laughs> <laughs> Lucan. Yes. It's your turn, and I'm imagining Kix was like, ah, because, you know, Shadow Man coming out of the wall to attack you is... Frightening, even if it didn't deal you any damage. Yes. I mean, by all accounts, I think I got hurt, or like, I like it, his hand like went through me, and now I'm confused. Like, I guess I don't know how the attack would have gone. Like, what did kicks? How? Like, what happened? It felt cold. Okay. The hand like passed through your form, but that was it. it didn't hurt. Just got a little chill. I convinced the party it's probably an illusion. I'm sure it is. Kick says that out loud. <laughs> I mean, I, will, like, I, it, I don't know why it wouldn't hurt me. It's like, it must be not, it's not, it's not actually be here. Do you do anything, Lucan? I can't see the thing. No, you can't. It disappeared when you looked. Yeah. Um, nope. I do nothing. Another creature emerges from the wall, right in between Arius and behind Track Maruk, as Track Maruk is working. And it looks at Arius, and it takes a swipe at you, like a test swipe. Gets a 31 to hit. Yeah, that's a crit. That's a crit? Yeah, that's a crit. Well, why don't you go ahead and not take 20 negative damage? Okay. It tickles as the creature claws through you. It kind of like has this, I don't know what I expected, face on. You know, kind like, of claps for fun just to make it think it did something. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, it crit me. I, I can't so stop I think you. The trigger still happens, right? I mean, it, it still meets the trigger requirements, even though it doesn't right. do anything. Yeah, yeah. The, they specifically uh, called that out in the list of Rata. Collapse! And it, it, it kind of jumps back a little bit, sees that it doesn't do anything. It looks behind him, sees that another skeleton is looking at his uh, buddy who had just swiped at what they thought was the human, the only living one in the group to, to steal its shadow, but it's not working. So he dips. He also disappears back, at, back through the wall. And they don't come back. That's it. That's the encounter. <laughs> that was an easy encounter. That was depressing. I pull myself together. It's amazing to me 
how frequently this adventure assumes that the adventurers are living creatures. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Even though they gave people and yeah, encouraged negative healing. They did. Yeah, yeah. They absolutely did. I think it was to. I think it's probably to make healing easier. Make healing easier and to create moments like this to an extent, too. Yeah, it's fun to just just really see what it's like, you know, being immune to certain things, being an undead. It's cool. And I it's, like it. These are shadow creatures. They The only thing they can do is negative damage. They, it is impossible for them to do anything to you. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we continue down. If the witches is dumb, it'll be an easy fight. <laughs> She won't be. Track Maruk in the time that uh, the shadows appeared, attacked, and then disappeared, you discover that, no, there are no traps on this door. You hear the faint bubbling of some liquid beyond, though. I open the door. Just like that, okay. And it opens. Leads into, uh, it's a bit of a difficult space. And this large open space is shrouded in darkness. The ground looks soft, like moist earth. There are towering piles of books, clothing, knickknacks, cooking and ritual ingredients, decades of refuse piled on the floor, and furniture, all just in enormous mounds. A winding path meanders through the hoarded belongings, and a faint light flickers just to your right, illuminating a large and bubbling black cauldron. Oh, of course it does. A woman is standing at what looks to be like a counter off to the right next to the cauldron, and she has a cutting knife in her hands, and uh, she's chopping something. Oh, come in! Come in! The old hag beckons, almost laughing as she stands at her cauldron. Who who are you? Why have you come all this way? Into my kitchen? Perhaps your guests... Here to see if I and Tavia's hospitality is all it's rumored to be. Well, pity my sisters aren't here to welcome you. They so love guests. And she just continues chopping her ingredients, tosses one a little bit into the cauldron, and it bubbles and poofs with a cloud of smoke. Oh, don't be shy. Stand in the doorway. Come in, come in. I am Track Maruk, and I have been here longer than you have, apparently. Oh, you're the skeleton that's in the basement. You came back. How wonderful. Yeah, I make my way into there. Right now, I'm just doing a little experimenting with the brain grit. It's not quite potent enough, she confides. So I have to spice it up with the powder from the ground-up bones of the fae. Now it does just fine. Wait, you're saying trimmer paste is... The ground-up bones of the fae? No, not tremor based <laughs> No, 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 no. That's Sani's business. No, I provide the brain grit. Oh, and um, what is the brain grit and tremor paste mixed with to create? Oh, I think you know the answer to that since you're here, right? It's a poison. And she goes back to cutting up some ingredients and throwing them into the cauldron. Well, yes, uh, we were aware that it was a poison, a brilliant poison. Well done, you. Uh, We just wanted to understand more about it, what all goes into it, and and what's the purpose. We're just collecting data, you see. Well, see, the brain grit I get from the brains of intelligent creatures. You'd refine it a bit. It's my own process. Personal, if you will. I hope you don't mind me not divulging the process. (laughs) Uh, anyways, uh, then I take the product, and it, we tested it just with the grit itself, but it just wasn't strong enough. Then I started grinding bones into it, and it was a little better, a little bit better. But the fey bones, <laughs> the fey bones, they provide the power it needs. Right, right, and um, and just to be sure, we are speaking with I and Tavia, are we not? She curtsies mockingly with the knife out. Shing. One and only. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Anyway, um, so what is the uh, end purpose of this poison? What's the goal? Who are you working with? Oh, well, right now, it's me and the other sisters of the Gravecock Clock Coven. 
Sani de Crozier. We're gathering all the ingredients, mixing them together. Well, we know two of the ingredients. The brain grit and the tremor paste. What's the third? What's what's de Crozier working on? Oh, that's de Crozier's secret. And she hasn't shared it with you? She hasn't produced. That bitch. That bitch indeed! <laughs> So, what's the, uh, what's the ultimate goal with this poison? What does one do with poison? Well, poison people, obviously. But what people and to what end? To what end? That's no business of yours. Oh, it is. We're, we're, we're um, reporters. We just want to know. We want to know about the world that we're in. Reporters? For who? Oh, for uh, the Vampires Weekly. Really? Yes. Well. I mean, if there's a way to poison people and easily procure them, we vampires want to know. The more people we can get, the easier, the better. I must say that I would love to provide you with all the material you would need for something like that. However, your companions, I think those bones have power. I think I'm going to use them now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But we're having such a lovely conversation. We're going to grind them up. If you kill my compatriots, I'm, I'm afraid I can't print your name in Vampires Weekly. Nobody will read about your wonderful works. Oh, no worries. I will be killing you too. But don't you want the acclaim? Don't you want the fame? Everything that you deserve, Iron Tavia? And she stabs the knife into the counter. I deserve... And she, sh she turns to you and she begins to shift and morph from this, like, granny hag with the, the bonnet and the apron and the skirt into this creature. And I'm going to share some art with you. Yes, yes, I am Tavia. It's Geb. We've all seen creepy, weird things before. Just have a conversation with me. That is super creepy, though. And now she doesn't want to. I tried. I got a 22 on my deception check, by the way. 22 on the deception? Yeah. It didn't seem like it was going to matter, but I tried. Yeah, he didn't even ask for one, which means it doesn't matter. Which means yeah, it doesn't it matter, matter, right? It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> As she changes shape, I need everyone to roll for initiative. Question would be, can you use your deception as... If you'd like. It is one better, I guess. Sure. I'll use my deception. Do I want take the one I rolled or do I re-roll it? Nope, take the one you rolled. A 22? Yeah, sure, why not? I'll take that 22. It's better than average. It's better than average. Woo, who rolled the nat 20? That was me, nat 20. I need to forget, I need to find new dice. Mook, showing up and showing out. Oh, everything, that everywhere on the map where you see, and there's a lot of it, the piles of garbage and, you know, books and pots and pans and furniture and just stuff. You've walked into a hoarder's space, essentially. That is difficult terrain. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. So you can see there are clear paths. Those are not difficult terrain. All right. I'm going to move 15 feet to the west as action number one. Action number two... Standing right next to the cauldron. Yeah, standing right next to the cauldron. Oh, I'm good. To flurry. I love how you ask that, Tyler. Yes, for no reason. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. No, no reason. Uh, flurry of maneuvers. First action is going to be to grapple. So I'm going to attempt an athletics check. Second action. Right. Yes, yeah, sec second. First half of the second action. Okay, now this is against what exactly? Her fortitude DC. Fortitude DC. What'd you get? Uh, 21. Not great. That is a failure. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Uh, second half of that action. What do I want to do? Uh, I will just attempt to strike. So there's a flurry. You can grapple with it because you have flurry of maneuvers, right? Correct. Flurry of maneuvers allows me to replace any action in flurry of blows with a trip, shove, or grapple. Got it. So I will attempt to then punch her, and I get a 22. I forgot to target her. A 22 
is a miss. And uh, I think that leaves you with one action. Yeah, if I can hit with a, I rolled 15 there and I still missed, so. Can I like leap up onto this desk thing? That would be onto the, uh, or counter. The her uh, counter? Y- y- yes, you could, but you also clearly see that there are knives, other cutting implements, sharp objects. It might hurt. Oh, duh. I forgot to go into Dragon Stance. I go into Dragon Stance. <laughs> sure it would be good if I remember I knew how to play my character. <laughs> well, we're finding out together. I mean, that Dragon Stance wouldn't have tank changed anything anyway, so... But that was my turn. Quite ineffectual. That takes us over to Iron Tavia. And with her first action, she deftly makes her way south along this, like, pile of debris, positioning herself farther back, deeper into the room. And the shadows back there are deep. Your light sources that you have are pretty close by, but it doesn't take much for it to turn into dim light. It's 20 feet on dim light, and it even seems to be constricted further than that, from bright light down to dim light. With her second and her third action, she casts a spell at Track Maruk. Oh, what a bitch. So this is Acid Arrow. She needs to make a spell attack roll. She's going to make that. Oh, fuck. 20. Uh, Actually, that misses. That misses. Are you sure you're not raging or something? Uh, That's not this character. Sorry. Well, shit. She's like, I learned that lesson. (laughs) Then the Acid Arrow flies just off to the left of your skull and hits against the wall and starts dripping down the wall. Okay, well, that's her turn. That takes us over to Lucan. It's your turn. So that's your game. Yeah, what an annoying game. I'll spend one action casting Boost Eidolon. So that boost onto Sun Drinker. Then, um... Is she really that big? She's fucking fat as shit. She's large in size, She's a fucking yeah. big-ass bitch. <laughs> she is a hag. A large hag that you haven't identified yet. I will spend a free action to extend boost, which uses one of my focus points. And I need to make a nature check. I roll a nat 20, so I critically succeed. That means my boost idol on is going to last four rounds. Nice. Then I will spend two actions and act together to have Lucan cast a spell at her. Um, We'll do it. We'll just do um, Electric Arc on her. Why not? A reflex save. Ooh, she gets a 19. That is a failure. She will take all of this damage. That's going to be nine electric damage. All right. I need you to stop Sundrinker. Okay. Back up by Arius. Okay. As a sun drinker is moving through the path of these piled winding debris, give me a reflex save. A reflex save. Okay. An 18. Go ahead and complete your movement. The sun drinker does move south toward Iron Tavia. And that is the completion of my turn. Okay. Out of the shadows, behind Lucan, leaps a fetchling. Motherfuck. Strides up behind Lucan and stabs him. Nobody liked that. 17 to hit. Okay, remind me again. Oh, your flat-footed AC is 13. What's this coin that I've got? This Drusilla thing? Oh, oh, the the Drusilla thing. Gives you advantage on 1d20 roll. Gives me advantage on 1d20 roll. That's not going to help me here at all. It does not, unfortunately. I get stabbed. You get stabbed. You're going to take nine points of damage from that. And then with its third action, it's going to hide again. It can do that? I mean, it can try. Because it's in dim light, they have something called shadow blending, which means they're concealed as a result of dim light. And you can hide while concealed. It specific, I mean, dim light specifically says creatures and objects in dim light have the concealed condition unless the seeker has dark vision or low light vision. Right. 
Well, it, but he hasn't seeked. He hasn't tried to seek them out yet. But also the ability that says they are concealed as a result of dim light both agrees with that and expands so upon it. So that's a different ability than you put in here then? there's a, they, they have a specific ability that says if they're in dim light, they're automatically concealed? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was the ability that I put in there. That's no, shadow you, you said when the fletchling is concealed as a result of dim light. No, no, no. It just says as a re- they are concealed as a result of dim light. No, that's not what that says. That's not what that says, Tyler. The Fetchland Scout is concealed as a result of dim... God damn it. <laughs> Alright, fine. I read it wrong. That would have changed everything. No, it's fine. I, I'm running away either way. <laughs> <laughs> if that wouldn't have worked, then they would have stepped away. Which is what I'm going to have them do. Good. Put more distance between me and them. And that's what they do. All right, and that's its turn. Now, kicks. It's your turn. I'll move up right at the bottom of the stairs, and I will cast Spirit Link on Lucan. I appreciate that. You heal too. I take Sweet. two, and that'll be my turn. Then, after kicks, Arius, it's your turn. I would move 25 feet up into this thing's face. I see that. Okay, go ahead and give me a reflex save. God damn it. 13. So as you're uh, beginning to move, your movement jostles one of the piles from where you started. So we're going to put you back here. And it falls into your square. And now these squares are difficult terrain. So did that cancel my movement? It would have interrupted your movement here, causing you to need to spend the additional movement to get through it. So you would end up one square further from her than where you want it to be. <sighs> Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now that red, that red those red sections are difficult terrain. Well, I guess technically, I mean, it'd be 25? Can I make that diagonal? should have been 30 because of the difficult terrain. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. Assuming it became difficult terrain before you moved into it, because it's moving into the terrain that makes it difficult, that takes extra five feet. Yes, yes, it it, it cost in this instance. Well, I guess I use my second action to take a five-foot step into her face. I mean, technically, that's difficult terrain. You can't make a five-foot step, but it's the same. Unless she she has a reaction, it's the same. I five-foot step here. That would work. <laughs> Hit her with my fucking sword. God damn No, you don't. <laughs> I fucking quit. Then that one says fucking no. Fucking that one. All right. Uh, then yeah. after... Ted just walks away. After <laughs> that... Oh, good. There's another creature called Midnight. I yeah, I watched. saw that, and I'm, like, both intrigued and scared because, like, a horsey dragon-looking thing named Midnight... I'm here for that, but I don't want to have to fight it. Oh, yeah. This shadow-wreathed tiny dragon flies out from under some of the debris right near Iron Tavia. That thing is sick. That's cool art. They got art that sick just for this witch's familiar. It's like a shadowy dragon. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. So this creature flies up from out of some of the garbage and is because it's tiny it's occupying Iron Tavia's space with one action it comes out with two actions it uses this ability called Shadow Breath and it blows this frigid ball of black shadow and shoots it at Arius and Arius needs to give me a reflex save <sighs> 20 20 is a success. Ooh. So you will take half of this cold damage. So take half of 14. The explosion of cold shadow also attempts to counteract your light spell. Oh no. Please don't succeed. Does a 17 beat your DC? Mm, possibly. No. It's 18. Ah. Oh, it's just a failure. Let's see. 
No, nope. the creature level wasn't high enough to take advantage of a failure, but yep, so your light stays. Woo! That could have been a problem. That's one resilient light you got there. Yeah, seriously. It's the light of Zeriel. <laughs> that finally. <laughs> May the light of Zeriel light your way. <laughs> That finally takes us up now that all the combatants are revealed. The top of round two. Track Maruk, you are up and you're standing next to the cauldron. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go south to just to that north I see that. west corner. Yeah, okay. Uh, what do I need to te- do I need to make any checks or You do. You need to give me a reflex save. Uh, how about a twenty eight? Oh yeah. You definitely make your way. Up to, I'm assuming, right up to Iron Tavia. Yeah. Um, we're going to do this again. i got my dragon tail on this time. But first action is going to be attempt to grapple. Athletics check. How about a 28? That is a success. Uh, she is grabbed. Now I attempt to hit her with my dragon tail. Nice. This is fun. This is fun. Oh, God. 21 flat-footed doesn't hit her? It does not. Fuck. Well, she's got a pretty decent AC, guys. No kidding. It's well higher than ours. Yeah, I already got it grappled. My only other option is to crit fish, I guess. My <sighs> roll a 18 on the die. I miss. Yep, the 19 total misses. Then after track Maruk, God, Iron Tavia grabbed... What? She uses her first action to strike at you with her claw. Oh, is that ah, really a net one on the die? Net ah, one. God damn. That makes this just a touch difficult then, doesn't it? For you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just g- give me a sec. Give me a sec. Uh, I'm not rushing you. I'm not rushing you. I'm, I'm, I'm more just mocking you. No, oh, obviously it's it's fine. I get it. I wouldn't mock me too. <laughs> it's it's standard. It's standard procedure. Yeah, obviously, it's just how we do things here. I have to just not roll like shit. Is I guess what I'm hoping to what I'm hoping for here. She's going to attempt to escape with the minus five in here because she already attacked once. Rolling like shit. Sixteen. Is that against my athletics DC or my fortitude? What is that against? Yeah, it should be against your athletics DC. I think it's athletics DC. Yeah, the athletics DC of a creature grabbing you. All right, then that is a failure. Damn. Damn, damn, Welcome damn. Welcome to Swallow Hole. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. She screeches in frustration. God damn. I mean, technically it wasn't a critical success or failure, so she could try again. Now she's just going to fucking yell at you. With an intimidate to demoralize, but you can't do that either. Thirteen. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, not going great for Iron Tavia right now. Uh, that is her turn. Lucan, it is your turn. It's not like our attacks have done much either. No, that's no, true. That's true. We haven't done much. Okay, so there's a guy over here. Uh, would you say from where Sundrinker is, I could reach across with ten feet and hit her? Yes. Okay. So, action one, Lucan moves the fuck away from this fucking fetchling guy. Give me a reflex save. Oh, that's right, that that fucking area. Well, Lucan wouldn't have known. And he's too startled. Too startled. He's super startled. He got stabbed. He did get stabbed. I get an 18 reflex save. An 18 is a success. You can continue the the stride action. Excellent. Okay. That red is difficult terrain. Yeah, I think I'll go, like, to here? That's good. Okay, now, action two and three will act together. That actually would be two actions because of the difficult terrain to get would there. It? Twenty-five. Oh, you're right. I'll just stay in the difficult terrain then. That's fine. You stand in the pile of collapsed debris. Why not? Sweet. You stand in a bunch of old papers and books, some Walmart bags with some clearance items in here that nobody ever opened or did anything <laughs> with. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Very yeah, good. yeah, you're good. Actions two and three act together, and we'll start by casting Electric Arc on the Fetchling and Iron Tavia. 
those within 30 feet of each other? Does, they don't have to be within 30 feet of each other. Oh, they just both have to be within 30 feet of, feet of me. You. That's right. Yep. Damn. They're all the way on the opposite sides of the room. Yep. Shit. All right. Reflex saves, please. Okay. Well, Iron Tavia got a 30. Well, that's a critical success. Uh, but the Fetchling got a 16. Well, he will fail and take all of seven electric damage. And then with a single action of Act Together, Sun Drinker with the uh, Boost Eidolon will attack Iron Tavia. Okay. And we'll go, I don't know, slashing? Sure. Okay. Oh, miss. I was spinning on a 19 for a minute there. Rough, but it ended up being a three. All right, that's my turn. All right, then after Lucan, that's going to take us over to the Fetchling. The Fetchling is going to use their first action to pick their way through that path all the way up to the door where Kix is standing. With their second action, you don't have a light source on you, Kix, do you? I don't see why I wouldn't. I mean, I have a light cast. I mean, I have a light. I don't know what it is, but I would have cast You have one of the light sources. That's what I'm curious about. Okay, then that means that this attack will not be with sneak attack added on top, but instead will be a feint. So the second action will feint. The 23 beat your will DC. Yeah. No, sorry. It's perception DC, not will DC. Then, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Uh, Is that a critical success? No. No. Okay. So that means you're flat-footed to their third action, which is a melee attack. Now it'll be a sneak attack hit. Will it? Oh, I 19 I to hit. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not Jeb anymore. I've been Jeb for ages. Been so long. Take 10 points of damage. That is the Fetchling's turn. That takes us over to Kix. It is now your turn. You're bleeding. I mean, not continuously, but you bleed. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, Unleash Psyche. Unleash Psyche. Boom. Amped Forbidden Thought on the witch. Uh, I choose Escape. Okay, wait. Hold on a second. You're doing Forbidden Thought on Iron Tavia, and that is es- the escape action. Correct. Well, fuck you very much. <laughs> I mean, she can still do it. I mean... <laughs> Does it still does it work? Does forbidden thought work like that? Can you post it for me? Oh yeah, but yes. I just choose. It says cast stride, cast a spell, or strike, or a specific action. You know the creature to have. And then I know that she has escape, or do you not think that she's using the basic specific, action? Yeah. Does escape have like the strike modificate modificate modificate? I mean, it has the attack? No, it's trait, attack trait. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, not. Like, striking isn't a subordinate action of it. I mean, so that's fine. I mean, it's a specific action. Yeah, I think it... I mean, this is a very specific action, and it's the escape action. I'll call it... Yeah, that's that's applicable here. And then... I'll just dart my eyes at this asshole that's hit me. And ask for a reflex save. Reflex save? Uh, 22. So take two. Got him. Got him. Then after kicks, that takes us over to Arius. It's your turn. I start hitting him. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, actually, first I'll attempt to intimidate and glare them. Okay. Iron Tavia? Yeah. All right. Does a 28 intimidate them? Woo! Demoralize them. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that does successfully demoralize them. That makes them frightened one, yeah? Frightened yeah. one and grappled. And then I start swinging. Second action. Big swing. Oh, God, that was, could have been an at 20. A uh, 24 to hit. A 24 hits. All those debuffs. Very poor damage roll. Uh, 12 damage. 12 damage. As you slice at her, you notice that her skin is tough. Like iron. And, uh, I don't know why I said it like that. And she does not take all of that damage. Alright, uh, 
I'll notice that, and then I will take a stab rather than a slash, because that was slashing damage. My third action. Then yes. A 23 to hit. Nice. nice. 23 hits. The result is the same. Piercing, okay. it also resists. Good to know. That's my turn. That takes us over to Midnight, is the name of the cute little dragon guy. He flies into Trakmaruk's space with its first action, and then with its second and third action, makes some strikes. He's got this uh, action called Draconic Frenzy. It gets to make a bite and two tail attacks in any order. Is this not actually her familiar? It's actually like a creature she has? I mean, just another creature? Uh, it's a creature in the room, yeah. Uh, it certainly looks like it fulfills the familiar role, but it doesn't follow the familiar rules. It's a little shadow dragon that hangs out. Uh, first attack, does a 17 hit? No. Okay. Second attack is with a tail. 24 hit? Oof. Yes. Take four points of bludgeoning damage. Let's go swing with the tail again. Done the nat one in the die. Sure, <laughs> let's do that. Yeah. That takes us to the top of round three. Track Maruk. Uh, there's a little dragon on you. He's biting and hitting you. It's your turn. All right. I think I have to maintain the grapple, right? So it works differently for you, for player characters, than it does for monsters, for example. Like, I actually have to roll, I think, right? Like, I still have to, like, re grapple her, basically. Your target, when you make a grapple attack attempt and it's a success, the target is grabbed until the end of your next turn, unless you move or your target escapes. So if you, you would have to grapple it again to make it go past the end of your right. turn. So if I don't re-grab her, she'll become ungrappled. Yes. I'm going to attempt to re-grab her. I get a 31. That's a success. Okay. I'm going to then see if I can actually get one of these tail attacks to work, even though I do have to roll super freaking high for it to work. Nope, that's a four. This gets interesting. That was just one action, wasn't it? That was just one action. Wow. Fuck you do with the other two actions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess just keep trying to hit her. This, this is the crit fishing stage. Just funny because I think even a critical would only be an, a normal hit. Nope. Oh, I maintained my grapple, guys. Yeah. Well done. You technically did the thing. Yes, absolutely. That's all that matters. Then after... Track Maruk, it is Iron Tavia's turn, and she's in an interesting spot. I've been trying to think of what to do with her. Kill her? No, I'm not going to kill her. You're supposed to kill her. No, that's what we're going to do with her. My bad. She's going to opt to uh, not attempt to escape. What a piece of shit. Uh, but instead just go absolutely cool. just she's just gonna scratch the hell out of track Maruk if she can and is just going to attack him I mean she's not gonna continue to fail attacking me at some point so she's gonna try to do a shit ton of damage to me this turn she could try to escape on a lowest her lowest attack 21 to hit that is my AC 21 roll the fucking 6 that's a stupid plus to hit Jesus 15 take 21 points of slashing damage there goes half my health. That wasn't even a crit critical hit. She's going to attack a second time on Track Maruk. 28 to hit. Yep. Dealing you 20 points of slashing damage. Yep. I'm down to five hit points. And with her third action, she's going to rend. She doesn't have to make an attack roll for this. She's just going to deal Track Maruk an additional 19 points of slashing damage. This might be my shortest-lived character ever. <laughs> How do you rend bone? Well, I'm dying. And also no longer grabbing her. That's what she cared about. All right, now that she's free, she just reaches around Shrak Baruk and kind of bear hugs him and then rakes across, hit the back of his rib cage with her claws and just kind of rips him asunder, and he collapses in a pile of bones at her feet. And then she turns to look at Sundrinker and Arius and Lucan surrounding her. Lucan, it's your turn. Okay. Thanks, Tyler, for cheating again. 
<laughs> like she knew what I casted on her, because she didn't. <laughs> I am going to should do something. I don't know what. I'm already doing all the things I can do. She's not undead. Neither is the fetchling. I'll spend one action to cast Protect Companion. Then I'll spend two actions to act together, and we will Electric Arc the Fetchling and Iron Tavia again. And I need reflex saves. Uh, let's see. The Fetchling gets a 24, and Tavia gets an 18. Well, that's a success and a failure, respectively. Fetchling will take half. Tavia will take full of 12 electric damage. All right. And with their single action from Act Together, Sundrinker will swing and will make this bludgeoning. And we'll get a 28 to hit. A 28 hit. And we'll deal 15 bludgeoning damage. There it is. It all goes through. Sweet! That's my turn. That takes us over to the Fetchling, who is already in position to continue stabbing kicks. So we'll faint first, and this is against your perception DC. Oh, 10 is going to fail, but is still going to attack you. Stab with the dagger. 18 to stab. Take 5 points of piercing damage. And with their third action, they're going to do it again. Uh, miss with the 15. Kicks, it's your turn. All the way till Arius. Till after Arius. Got it. Arius, it's your turn. The new guy's down already? New guy's yeah. down already. <laughs> mm. When she does 50% of my hit points every hit, kind of what's going to happen. Doesn't take long. I think you did a great job, Mook. I'm just gonna be like, yo, Kicks, run over here and we're gonna do a three action of harm. <laughs> and then I wait for Kicks to go. <laughs> so Kicks delays until after Arius, and then Arius delays to go hopefully after Kicks. I'm assuming he thought I was gonna do something other than a three action harm. Yeah, I was hoping you'd just two action heal and kill her. <laughs> I mean,. I doubt I'm her killer. She's badly injured, and I, she has the yard in my shit. So let's get within 30 feet of me and do whatever you're going to do. Uh, now I'm over here, and I... Go ahead and give me a reflex save. What? I walked around the shit. Yeah, I know. There's, like, parts of it that are, like... If you're walking adjacent to it, you have to make the save. I had to do it twice. Give me a reflex save, Kix. Yeah, shut up. I'm ch looking at the thing. <laughs> How, just walking right into this part would get me to do it. Yes. Because you're walking adjacent to the square. Failed? Oof. You used your hero point. Sure. Oh. Critical oh my gosh. Point. This is just not your combat. Uh, as Kix is walking next to the piles of shit, he kicks something that was you know, turned out to be a very foundational piece to a pile, and it topples on top of him and knocks him over. Kicks, you are now prone on the ground in that square. And these are now difficult terrain. And she's just attacking with claws, you said? She is, yeah. I'll just throw one of the things that fell on top of me at her. Tell the connect projectile? Nope, because I missed and I'll be done. That's so close to a third one. Alright, I do a... Th Three action, second level harm. Three action harm. Tyler, I'm sorry I told you to shut up. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All of that was likely very frustrating. More so frustrated about you cheating, but... Oh, obviously. Everyone gets 16. Hell yeah. Harm the living or heal the undead. When you use three actions, it does both, right? Yeah, is this chick living or dead? Living. She needs a fortitude okay. save, right? She needs to do that fortitude save then, yeah. Okay, and then so likely does uh, Midnight, the Shadow Dragon. There's like no way to fail this. 24? Yeah, it's a success. That's half damage. She takes 8. Take 8. Okay. Does her familiar take damage? 
It will, yeah, as soon as I find out where the hell... Oh, there it is. Uh, 18 on the fortitude save there. Yeah, it's I'm a assuming... success right on the dot. Right on, okay. Then takes half of that 16. Okay. I believe that's everyone, because the fetchling is not in range. Correct. Then that takes us to the bottom round three, where it is the Shadow Dragon Midnight's turn. With its first action, it flies down across Iron Tavia and into Arius's square. Back of opportunity. The fuck away from me, little dragon dude. 22 to hit. 22 hits. When I hit, 14 damage. 14 damage, and because it couldn't clear away your light, it can't use its shadow dodge reaction, so it takes all that damage. To hit. And then it uses its second and third action to attack you. Draconic Frenzy. I'm immune. First one does 19 hit? No. 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 And that one in the die, gross. No. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it little dragon just starts, it just flies into your square and just flaps about, b- snapping at you and swinging its tail. It doesn't do anything, but it's likely annoying. Top of round four, Trakmaruk, prone, but stable and conscious. Your turn. Yes, it is. Let's see. So if I take minus two penalty to attack rolls, does that also include... Like anything with the attack grapple. trait. Anything yeah. with the attack trait. That's anything yeah. with the attack trait. Okay. I'll just use my first action to stand up. Uh, second action. This time, I'm going to try to trip her. Prone didn't seem to be working very well. I was almost a net 20, but I get a 26 instead. 26 is a success. Now she's prone. <laughs> uh, okay. And since she's prone, now I'm going to try to... The second half of my... Flurry, I'm gonna dragon tail her. Ugh, 18 to hit. That'll mess. Third action, uh, move away. I've <laughs> the fuck back. How many feet did you move there? Just 10? Just 10. Okay. And that's my turn. Then after Trek Maruk, that takes us over to Iron Tavia, who is now on the ground and very annoyed by that. He uses her first action to stand up. She's going to cast a spell, and uh, you can see this, like, uh, she casts a spell, and this black pulsating energy emanates from around her, and then she pulls it into herself, and she gains energy from it. And by energy, do you mean health, or what? Yeah, temporary hit points. That takes us over to Lucan. It's your turn. All right. Well... I will once again cast Protect Companion onto Sundrinker with my first action. Then with actions two and three, I will act together and once again cast Electric Arc onto the uh, Fetchling and Iron Tavia, needing reflex saves. Okay, so the Fetchling gets a 29, Iron Tavia gets a 28. Well, those are both successes, so they'll each take half of this damage. Not critical successes, though. They'll each take half of 10, so five... And then Sundrinker will use their single action from Act Together to attack Iron Tavia, and I will use my uh, blessing from Drusilla to give me advantage on this. Aha. Uh-huh. I get a 28 to hit. 28. What did you get? 17 and 11? Solid. It looks like it. This will be bludgeoning damage, even though it'll say slashing. That's 16 bludgeoning damage. All right. She takes all of it. She's not looking great. You just plowed through the temporary hit points that she she just gave herself. I really do apologize. It's going to be more than that. Uh, it keeps expiring my um, boost Eidolon, even though I got it for four rounds, because it normally only uses one round. So if you would, please add four damage to that. So it should be 20 damage that I deal for. Oh, so 20 damage. Yes. Yikes. She is not quite dead, but she looks real close. Alright, that is my turn. Alright, well that takes us over to the Fetchling, who is going to make their way over to Kix and then stab some more. Now that you're on the ground under books and other debris, 
You're flat-footed. 17 hit. Take 10 points of damage. And then a third action for another strike. 21 to hit. So it'll take 6 points of damage from that. Stabbing a guy while he's buried under trash. Kix, it's your turn. I attempt a... Amped days on him. On who? The guy next to me. I'm successful. Um, yeah. Uh, I just need a reflex save from him. Not reflex. Will. 20. He takes four damage, and then I stand up. You take half of four? Because he succeeded this, the saving throw? Uh, oh, maybe he just doesn't take any here. Hold on. Yeah, it's basic, so yeah. Two. Well, that puts the fetchling to near death. He gets to bleed out of his eardrums. Arius. There's a dragon in your space. It's your turn. I ignore the dragon and I attack her. Bold move. And I got 28 to hit. 28 hits. Almost minimum damage. 7 damage. That is not enough. Her thick hide prevents her from taking all of that damage. And it's just enough to save her. I swing again. And critically miss. I guess I take a third swing and crit fish. I have nothing else I can really do. Nothing else I really want to do, I should say. 15 dead. Miss. Okay. Misses all around. That takes us over to midnight. The little shadow dragon uses its first action to fly over to the other side of Tavia. Attack of opportunity dead. Number wait. And then uses its second and third actions... You're not going to try to kill the creature that's almost dead? <laughs> no, I'm going to try and kill her instead. Is going to launch a little black ball of smoky liquid that explodes into a cloud of frigid black shadow right next to Kix and Track Maruk. And you both need to give me reflex saves. 21. 21 succeeds. A 20. No, I got a 21. You got a 20. 20 and a 21. Okay, that was both succeed. So you'll take half of this, half of 12 cold damage, and it's going to attempt to counteract Kix's light spell. It gets in that one in the die. Damn. With what, though? An action, or is that a free? Uh, it's part of the It's part of the ability. Oh. Uh. All right, well, Midnight just can't put out any of the lights in the room. It's just too bright for them. That takes us to the top of round five. Track Maruk, it's your turn. Move into Midnight Square. We're going to attempt to Dragon Tail her. Attacking Iron Tavia, okay. Attacking Iron Tavia. 25 to hit. A 25 hits. Ideal, or 14 damage. Tell me what this looks like coming from our new character, Track Maruk. How do you kill Iron Tavia? So it's meant to mimic, it's a powerful leg strike meant to mimic like a dragon tail, like slot, like slashing around. So I kind of pictured, you know, basically like a roundhouse, just. Roundhouse kick to the face. R- roundhouse. Well, when I think of dragon tail's pretty low, so more like sweeping her legs out from underneath her. But really hard, so it like breaks her legs. <laughs> she falls over, breaks her neck on the wall because of the momentum. Alright. Well, you kill Iron Tavia. With the second half of my attack, I'm going to attack Midnight. With a 21 to hit. That's a hit. I deal Midnight 13 damage. Midnight also dies at your hand. Double kill. So he then does the same thing to Midnight where he just roundhouse kicks Midnight into the wall also and just squishes it into shadowy nothingness. Blah. Wow. That's great. You still have a third action? Technically? Yeah, I guess. Let's see. Five. Um, yeah, this is dangerous, but I'm going to move up next to our new friend. Ooh. You're making the movement through there rather quickly. Go ahead and give me a reflex save. 23. 23 is a success, so you are fine. 
a monk, a nimble. Yeah. So that's my turn. Okay. This gurgling sound happens under Iron Tavia's body. The ground has little, like, squirching tendrils that kind of go up and lash onto her body and start sucking her down into the earth. And this sound reverberates through the room, almost like this gargling, squelching... You hear this slight hissing coming from all over the room, and you can see that it's coming from the floor. The cottage enters initiative. Out with the Gerdrug, in with the Track Maruk, and dead with the Iron Tavia. But now we're going to have to fight her cottage while we're inside of it? How is that going to work? Find out next time as we continue Blood Lords. And until then, may you have many great adventures of your own. It's your turn. <laughs>